What inspires, excites, and drives today's man? I'm Chris Collinsworth. The answer's inside the vault. Today, it's the manliest of manly meals. Steak. Why guys love the steak dinner. Bon Appetit's Andrew Knowlton's going on a man mission at Michael Simon's Roast in Detroit. Are you ordering the worst cut on the menu? Probably. You just killed my favorite steak. Plus, avoid looking like a rookie. The number one steakhouse don't. This whole myth that's been going on forever, it has to stop. Order this at your own risk. And the carnivore's dilemma. Can you really taste the difference between corn-fed and grass-fed beef? I don't care what the cow ate, I'm eating the cow. The high stakes taste test inside the vault. Can the food critic survive it? God, I hope I'm right. Then we're going around the world in 80 plates. Where to burp, where to slurp, and when in Japan, why you never, ever do this. It means death. Oh. Plus, three Vegas kitchen kings burn rubber. What happens when these ultra-competitive chefs take each other on at the racetrack? Loser cooks. Oh, my can do TV with a chunk of steak <laughs> in my mouth. I'm Chris Collinsworth, and you are Inside the Vault, along with Joe Wagner, Alonzo Bowden, and our expert today, Andrew Knowlton from Bon Appetit magazine. And we're talking about men, we're talking about food, and of course, we're talking about, Andrew? Steak. There you go. That's what it is. There's <laughs> no way we're having a men's show without <laughs> talking about the greatest meal there is on the face of the earth, as far as men are concerned, just a big, juicy steak. I have a hard time when I go to restaurants, if there's a steak that's on the menu, I have no choice. I have to order it. I'm with him. I'm on a steak train. I so have to say, it's attractive. I don't want a guy to eat a salad. But you know what's funny about it is that as much as we all love steaks, we don't know anything about steaks. I mean, really, you kind of go in, maybe it's a little like men asking for directions. You want to act like you kind of know what you're talking about, but... You really don't, and there is a difference. People go into steakhouses, and you know, you're paying 80 bucks for a steak, and they're, they're getting it well done, which is the biggest faux pas you can make. How do you feel about sauces on steak? Don't hit her. <laughs> don't hit her, she's from the South. I don't mind a little A1 sauce, and peppercorn, or even well, ketchup. Well, this, this day and age, if you're- oh, Wait, 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 Whoa. ketchup? And, and this is something that's kind of, I think, left over from maybe the 50s when some of the quality of steak we weren't getting, that you had to douse it in this sauce to make it taste good. You don't have to do that with good steak. Now, I understand you got a little <laughs> uh, a little feature here. We're going to Yeah, look at we something. went and spent some time with uh, Iron Chef Michael Simon uh, at Roast Restaurant in uh, Detroit. And uh, he actually has a dry-aged steak room, which you'll see what that's all about, underneath the restaurant. This is the secret life of your steak, from the moment it gets here to the moment it hits your plate. And I'm here with Iron Chef, Chef, and my good friend, Michael Simon. And what a lot of people don't know is the meat that they eat here, the meat we're gonna eat a little bit, has actually been here a month. It takes a little bit of time, a month to 60 days. We put it in our aging room, and then we butcher it up, and then it hits the plate. But the magic doesn't happen out here on the dining room floor. No, in the back. Can we check it out? Yep. All right. This is where the magic happens. In the cellar roast, we, we set up one of our aging rooms, so we got all ribeyes going right now. I mean, I've been in a few of these aging rooms, but it almost smells like funky cheese going on. Yeah, it's, it's almost like the aging of cheese. You could smell, to me, it just smells so good because I know what is about to right. come. So, Chef Simon, we got 45. 45, and you can feel how firm it is. So this is 25? 25. 25. 25. And, and this today. just came in today. There is something magic that happens when a steak dry ages. It, it gets that little bit of funk to right. it, which is just so delicious. For today, I'm going to trim and cut one steak out of each one. We could taste them side by oh, side. Oh, that'll be awesome to see the difference. The difference in flavor and moisture and texture. My perfect steak is a bone and ribeye like a rib chop. But right behind that's a ribeye because it's got, it's, it's tender but it's got a good amount of fat, good amount of marbling, and big, big flavor. Fat equals flavor. Filet mignon has almost no fat in it. No fat, <laughs> no texture, no, it's just a no fun steak. <laughs> Quit being sissies and eating filets. If you want a man up, you eat a ribeye, a steak with fat that you need a knife to eat, and it'll make you a much more burly man. See how the color of the meat has gotten a lot deeper? Yeah. You know, and, and the deeper that color gets, the deeper the flavor gets. Right. So 
uh, kosher salt, a little bit of olive oil, that's it. So let's put these on the grill. All right, let's go. I think medium rare with a ribeye that has some fat in it. You know, it's that perfect temperature where the fat starts to melt a little bit and just kind of baste that steak. And, and it's just the perfect amount of tenderness, but you haven't cooked all the fat out of it. Right. You let it rest for a little bit, five, 10 minutes, and the juice is going back in. So when you cut into that steak, all the juice doesn't end right. up on your plate. It ends up in your mouth. So this Once, was the 45. I mean, you get that musky, deep, rich, fatty, beefy goodness. I mean, that was like the best piece of steak I've had in a few years. This is just, you know, the 25 days. Still, great flavor, but can you see how it has a little more texture to yeah. it too? The longer the age, the more tender it gets also. And this is the one that just came in today. Great steak, great marbling. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an awesome steak. But it's not, dude, it's not even the close, right? No. Because when those steaks age and some of that moisture leaves, it, the beef flavor just gets more and more and more intense. You made this really worthwhile, and if you want to do another segment sometime about <laughs> meat, I'm your man. All right. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. man. Be good. I'm not even smart enough to eat. <laughs> no, I can't, I can't eat but steak anymore. But now you know anymore. what steak to order. Most steakhouses, probably 60% of the cuts of meat, people are ordering filet mignon. This steak has no flavor at all. There's no marbling, which is, when you know when you see a raw steak, you have all those white kind of etchings in there. That's fat, and that's flavor when that cooks and melts and that gelatin, and that's what really defines a great steak. You just killed my favorite steak. But this whole myth when... that's been going on forever, we're not getting our bang for our buck with that, with that piece of meat. Well, not anymore. The next time they offer me a fillet, it's gonna be trouble. I understand <laughs> we have a chance to do one of these taste tests here now, is that right? We're gonna see if we can taste the difference between grass-fed beef and grain-fed beef. Now, what happens if you flunk this test? You know we're going to go bananas. You understand I that, right? I think Alonzo's no. going to be the restaurant Let's editor of Bono Let's You know what's going to happen if he flunks the test because <laughs> oh, no. he's an expert. He'll just say, oh, well, the chef didn't the chef prepare it was properly. Prepared properly. And he this. overcooked this by seven degrees. And, and he, you know, I, I, I won't know, be man. wrong. The I will suspect. not be wrong. Jimmy Martinez is the chef at one of the best steakhouses here in L.A., Boa Steakhouse. All the stars go there. A little round of applause for Jimmy. Bring Thank him out here. He's bringing you. us some food. What do you say? Thank you, guys. Wow. That looks good. All right. What's so we got the grass and the grain. Grass-fed and the grain-fed. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so and and gonna... which one's supposed to be better? A lot of this has to do, I mean, this big, what we're saying, the carnivore's dilemma has to do with, you know, grass versus grain, because grain, you have all these feedlots, and it's not supposed to be good for the planet. And cows, when they, you know, back in the day, they never ate grain. They were always eating grass. I was raised on, like, Nebraska corn-fed beef, that kind of funky richness. That's why it's kind of a dilemma for me, because I want to support, you know, whatever the sustainable practices that, you know, is a hot topic right now in food. But when you talk about taste, to me, it's all about grain-fed. Grain-fed, in theory, is the one that tastes better. Well, they fatten up these cows and make them, you know, you get that great marbleization on it. So it's sort of like offensive linemen. You just want them big, <laughs> big and fat big. and, you know, he said Nebraska. slaughter people. Nebraska. That's you think way too much before you eat. You got to just <laughs> dig in. You, I, can we you gotta imagine do this. just sitting down? <laughs> what did the cow eat? I don't care what the cow ate. I'm eating the cow. Now, I want to know which celebrity can tell the difference. Do you think there are celebrities that can really are there do there foodies? This? Celebrity foodies? Celebrities come to Boa all the time. Uh, are there like, are there like I stars I, in the I, food I, business? Thank you. That's the first I, I don't one? trust celebrities when it comes to food, right? That's the stars well, you, don't I'm just going to pick this up with my hand. See, so you're like a caveman already. You don't even, they got forks right in front That's of you. Here. We're going to show on, how polished we are. This is inside the vault. I want to say this is good, but that doesn't sound refined at all. Why am I can't do TV with a chunk of steak <laughs> in my mouth? So right. we have the second one. There you go. I'm going to guess that first one was grass fed. That's my guess. This is grain, I think. First one grain, second one grass. Really, I would have gone the opposite. Personally, I think, and God, I hope I'm right. I think the 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 first one is is definitely grain, and the second one is definitely grass. First one's grain, second one is ah, grass. You can't fattier. eat with me, Collinsworth. I'm hanging out with Andrew from now on. All right, we're gonna take a short break so I can get some mashed potatoes. But next on Inside the Vault, around the world in 80 plates, would you eat a piranha? Oh boy, it's gonna be interesting. Crazy World Food Customs coming up next. You guys are so fast. They're like animals. I had them both in my mouth at the same time, so I had no chance whatsoever. Do you think I wrote down corn-fed jokes before the show started? 